Hey, well today we are going to be working on Grandpa D. I've got some work to be done on him. Also, if you haven't looked at it, I mentioned this in the last couple videos. If you haven't checked out uh, Rusty Wrenches, Half Rods Builds, um, Montana Garage, and then there's a new one called um, 55, 55 Four really good YouTube channels to check out, uh, especially if you're working on C10s. Rusty Wrench is a really good YouTube channel to check out. So let me show you guys what I'm doing today. Here, let me flip the camera. As you can see, there's some rust that's getting through here, and I don't have the money to have a brand new paint job put on. So I did the bad thing last year. I put regular home caulking up there. So I'm getting the, <laughs> the caulking out. Uh, I hope I didn't destroy things and I'm gonna put seam sealer in then I'm gonna tape them off and um, yeah I'm gonna tape them off and shoot them with some paint I've got some duplicolor white I'll mask everything off I'm also gonna use some of the Eastwood rust converter before I put the seam sealer on to stop any rust from continuing and then I've got some, some primers that I'll put down before I shoot the paint and I'm gonna be using the Eastwood seam sealer so, ah, uh, let's go ahead and look real quick. I'll see if I can get up into the truck, show you guys what he looks like right now from the top. My grandfather had him painted years ago, but you can see there's a little bit, it might be hard to see, there's a little bit of surface rust coming through on the paint here as well. I need to have a new paint job done, but here is, you guys can see there, um, this is where the, uh, the seam sealer has come back and water's getting in there so I need to need to get all of that out and then hit it with some rust converter and new seam sealer and paint him so that's what I'm working on before it starts raining again luckily here in California we're not getting a lot of rain not that I really like that we need as much rain as we can get but it's kind of helping me out right now so that's the job today, and I will catch up as I move forward. Well, I am so grateful that I decided to do this. What I was doing is I just, over the years, I didn't want to do it. I knew I had a little bit of rust starting up, but I didn't want to, I didn't have the money to pay for a new paint job, you know, and so forth. So I just kind of kept putting it off. And then this year, I just went, you know what, regardless, I'll just tape the area off. It's not going to be very noticeable. It'll be a different color white, but doesn't matter and look at all the rust I'm just grateful got to it look at all the rust that's forming in here and the seam so the different tools that I'm using to get in here um, <clears throat> using a couple different flathead screwdrivers and I tried at the beginning just pushing the seam sealer out and pulling back carefully towards me and uh, just was kind of painstakingly so I just grabbed my ball peen hammer with the sharper um, flat blade screwdriver and just started peen 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 peening it and just coming right out no worries so uh, it's really cool to see the different layers right here if you guys can see that with the different layers of um, sheet metal that they stacked on top of each other to get the roof now when you're doing this you want to make sure that you get way back up into this part of the drip rail in the back side there is seam sailing right back here I noticed a lot of the rust back in this back section right back up in here so when you're doing this and i'm not a professional at all i've watched a lot of youtube videos this is my first time ever doing this on a vehicle so if i'm doing things wrong please let me know um, like and subscribe and to other channels but so this is what i've got i'm gonna hit it with a little wire wheel on on my on my um dewalt cordless and uh, get the rest of this stuff out as I move around but I just wanted to show you guys what it's looking like now and how happy I am that I'm getting it out because man it is and there's a lot of moisture I don't know if you guys can see that but there's a lot of moisture up underneath the original caulking still under there so just happy to get it out right now and keep grandpa D nice and dry for years to come so look at this see all the moisture that's back up in here in the metal so yeah, and I'll do a good job taping. I'm, I know how to paint and stuff, but I just don't usually have a lot of time and I know how involved of a process it is. So, <clears throat> but I will do a good job taping this off and taping the, the, um, the seam sealer and everything before I 
put it on and everything. I'll, show, I'll go over that as well, which a lot of people on YouTube have already done, but um, I'll just kind of show me doing it. But yeah, that's, that's it. I've got the entire drip rail all the way around. This is this side you can see down in this crevice in between. Got a lot of rust starting up down here and I'm just happy to get it out of there so that it doesn't cost me thousands of dollars later to have somebody professionally redo the drip rails and stuff. So, All right, cool. I'll let you guys know as I move forward. Here we are now. I've been able to clean all of it except for the passenger side down. So it's really nice. The driver's side only came down to right here. I chased the rust down. It stopped right there. But as you can see, the rust continued all the way along the top. Oops. My phone. Sorry, I don't have a GoPro, so everything's done on my phone. Uh, it continued on around here obviously in both the corners where water sits coming down now on the passenger side as i'm coming down here if you can see it i don't know if you can see it here but there is little bits of rust coming through the original seam sealer so it looks like i'm gonna have to chase this all the way down i didn't want to have to do that so i'm gonna have to tape really close to the cab right in here so that i don't leave any of that that new paint I don't want that to look really weird having two different colored whites, so I'm going to have to run the tape real close for that one. But anyway, yeah, I'm just chasing it down. Looks like I've got rust that can, water continued to catch and follow it down, So, but just about done. Hitting it gently with the hammer, and just uh, when you are using the screwdrivers, make sure to get make sure to get, I know I mentioned this before just a couple minutes ago, but make sure to really get in in between where the sheet metal comes together here <clears throat> where it overlaps there's a, a little like catch right in here where the um, seam sealer really the old seam sealer really likes to grab and stay in there so to get a clean it all out make sure that you're ready for the new seam sealer make sure to get under all those pieces and like I said I'll come back with the wire, wire wheel and then I'll shoot it with some uh, paint prep, you know, um, and alcohol, and clean it up, and then put on the Eastwood rust converter. Moving on. So this is pretty cool. You can see where the overlap of the sheet metal for the roof comes together. The two pieces right there. That's pretty neat. It's the first time I've ever done this. So I've got a respirator on right now because all of the metal shavings and rust but that's pretty cool how that how they stamped that together i didn't know those who work on c10s a lot already know this but it's my first time so yeah it's pretty cool it's neat to see how it's all stamped together there how they overlap especially right here in this corner i'm looking at the passenger side right now this is the passenger side and then it continues down and then out in the back of the drip rail on this very back back side up against the wall Get that little seam right there and that's where i'm gonna have to really get that eastwood rust converter down into there so pretty cool pretty cool after using my uh, little wire wheel on my dewalt here i've been able to get down to see there bare metal on most of it but there are little parts where you can still see the rust is coming through down i can't get into these little tiny areas and that's where the eastwood <clears throat> That's where that Eastwood uh, rust converter is going to get in and get those. Luckily, I thought I was going to have a whole bunch of holes in through here with the amount of rust that I saw. But thankfully, it's all still very solid. I um, don't see any areas other than where the joints come together. There's a couple little areas right in here, but it looks like I'm going to be able to seal those up. And it's coming together. You can see over there what it looks like and then with this little attachment on the DeWalt, it's working out pretty good, so. Yeah, I'm doing good. All right. The Eastwood Rust Converter comes in a bottle, like that, a spray bottle. The nice thing about it is it, it's a liquid, so when you put it on, you can really get it into all of the little places, and it'll seep in to where the rust might be which is really nice uh, it does when I used it on my dad's 55 uh, when it sets up it's solid <laughs> it's almost like a it um, 
yeah, almost kind of like a little powder coat that you end up putting on. So uh, be, be careful how much you put on when you are using it. I'm using a toothbrush here. Oops, back out here. I'm using a toothbrush and just applying it like that. This is what it looks like in the bottle. And I'm just gently brushing it in all the way around. <clears throat> Last video, I don't know if I showed that I was able to clear all of it out, all the rust out. There are some areas like back in here that I can't get to with my uh, little wire wheel. So, as I move along. But with that toothbrush and, and the rust converter, I should be able to get down into all the little, little areas down there. So, that's what I'm doing and I'll let you guys know once it sets up, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, this is two coats and I let it sit overnight. You can see it's pretty hard. It's on there. I might put one more coat on because I can see some areas right in here because of overnight. And I don't know if it was because water got on it or what, but I can see a little bit of rust. So I might put one more coat on it just to cover it up and then uh, let it sit for a little bit longer this afternoon and then put the um, seam sealer on. So that's what the Eastwood rust converter does. It's really, if you guys can see that, it's really um, makes a hard like shell over it. The nice thing is though, it is water soluble because I had a run that was coming down the side right here, went all the way down and I was a little freaked out that got on the white, but with water it just comes right off. So that's why I think last night got a little bit or this morning got some dew on it and it got down into these areas where I can see a little bit of most like well probably rust coming through so i got everything down to bare metal so that little flash rusting once i put some more of the uh, rust converter on i think it's going to take care of all that so there we go just working on the process and take my time make sure i get everything done right so i don't have to do it again for a number of years here okay all right so after Putting the third coat on and letting it dry, this is what you end up with. It's a polymer, I was reading the instructions and it says that once it dries, it's a um, hard base polymer, I guess. And so this is what you end up with. It's a nice hard um, matte black finish. <clears throat> and the Eastwood rust converter is on now. Next thing I'm gonna do is put in the seam sealer. Once I get done with the seam sealer, then I'm gonna shoot it with primer. And then from the primer, I'll then shoot a some duplicolor white on it. Uh, the white is going to be different than the normal color or the original color of the bed. Not the bed, the cab, sorry. And uh, yeah, but that's just what i got to deal with because we've got weather coming in and I've got to get this guy sealed up. So here we go. We're going to move on to the next step, putting the seam sealer on. There are a couple good videos. Eastwood has a really good video on seam sealer. Um, their video is a good thing. Um, my hat all crazy here. <clears throat> so they have a, a really good video that talks about how to use their seam sealer. You can also use their pre, is um, pre pre paint prep and spray it on. It's not going to damage the um, seam sealer and allows you to. It makes it a little more ply. It makes it pliable and a lot slicker, easier to move and get into all the spaces you need to make it flowing. So I've got the tape down, everything's good. Time to move on to the next stage. Here is the finished product with the Eastwood seam sealer. Uh, the little trick using Eastwood pre uh, paint, I'll show you that in just a little bit at the end of the video, uh, at the end of this portion of the video, um, makes a huge difference. Using that pre allows you to smooth this out. I've never done seam sealer before, so those of you who've done it before, I've already been through this experience, but I hadn't, and it's like biscuit batter. <laughs> so when you originally put it on, it's a little smooth, and then it just gets blah, 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 starts, blah, starts clogging up. Um, but when you put that pre on, you spray the pre on it, it, com it just smooths it out, allows everything to smooth. And then also, uh, I had the tape up, and the tape's leave, tape leaves kind of hard lines. Well, tape leaves hard lines, and so the pre allows you to go back and just feather those out as you're coming down then I'll paint over all of this so it won't have the hard lines anymore but it turned out I think it turned out pretty good had to go all the way down on this side the other side I didn't have to go down as far but looking at that turned out pretty smooth 
I tried. They've got a couple little valleys right up in here in this area, right there especially. And one right there. I might go back and put some more into it. I don't know. It just depends. But for right now, it is what it is. This area there is um, this is where two of the seams come together, but I put a lot of seam sealer in here, so I don't I don't think there's gonna I'm gonna have to worry about anything, any water getting in at all, or rust forming, especially when uh, you can see right here, it's got the uh, rust. Rust converter, sorry. The rust converter and the rust converter. I have three coats of that, plus then I put down the seam sealer. Then I'm going to shoot it with primer, and then I'll put the Duplicolor white on. So I think it's going to be plenty protected. Uh, I got all of the edges right up here. In, so I don't have to worry about rust getting into any of these did all of the seams where everything came together the main seam runs right along the very edge and the inside here so I pushed it down really hard with my finger at one little spot right there but there is seam sealer back behind there as well but I'll make sure to, to fill that in before I paint so that's there you have it I'm gonna I'm done for the day Come back in a couple days or in a day I'm gonna cover them up tonight uh, put a tarp over the top and then I'll have to tape them off later this week shoot the primer and then shoot the paint all right thanks for checking them out oh let me sorry about what the pre looks like real quick jump down here there we go okay so this is what pre-painting prep spray this on and it flows and this is what I use. It's the high solids seam sealer beige. All right, thanks for checking it out, guys. And till the next video, when we do some priming and some painting, thanks. I'll see you guys in the next video.